Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the emulation performance of this $280 Walmart laptop that I recently picked up. Now I've done a couple reviews on these cheaper gateway laptops from Walmart, but recently I came across the new 11th gen i3 version. And on paper, at a $279 price point, it actually looks like a decent little setup here. The only downside that I'm seeing with this $280 version is it only comes with 4GB of RAM and it's non-user upgradable, it's soldered to the board. So taking something like this and installing Linux on it would definitely be the way to go. Or spend a little more money and get the 8GB version, same thing, but it comes with 8GB soldered to the board. But when it comes down to it, this is the only 11th gen mobile Intel CPU that I haven't reviewed and I've really been trying to get my hands on it, but uh, these laptops have been a bit expensive for the specs and coming across this $280 model, I knew I had to pick it up and test out some emulation. Now over here on the right hand side, we have a single USB 3.0 port, headphone jack, and a micro SD card reader. Over on the left hand side, we have our power input, another USB 3.0 port, full size HDMI, and a USB Type-C port. Unfortunately, this only transfers data, we can't get video over this USB Type-C. When it comes to the specs for that CPU, we have the i3-1115G4. It's a dual core CPU with four threads, base clock, three gigahertz, and a boost up to 4.1. When it comes to the GPU, this is actually based on the newer XE Iris graphics, but we only have 48 execution units, and this is running up to 1.25 gigahertz. It's actually pretty interesting seeing this coming in an i3. Four gigabytes of LPDDR4 soldered to the board, running at 3200 megahertz. 128 gigabytes of storage out of the box, but if we take a look at the bottom of this unit, there is an easily accessible M.2 slot, so we can add storage pretty easily to this unit. It does come with Windows 10 and S mode, but you can easily upgrade this from the Microsoft Store, so with this one here, we're running Windows 10 Home, and this does have AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. The last Gateway laptop that I reviewed, which was one of their lowest end models that they sell on their website, only had 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi built in, and it was pretty slow. And just to give you an idea, upgrading the storage is really simple, just two screws here. And I wanted to pull the bottom off just to make sure that this was soldered to the board. And as you can see, the RAM is not replaceable. It does have a pretty massive heatsink when it comes to this little i3 CPU. And through all of my testing, this has stayed super cooled, even with this little CPU running at up to 30 watts. Most of the time when you find these inexpensive laptops, the CPU is running at a much lower wattage, but this one right out of the box was at 30, and inside the BIOS, we could even take that up a bit higher, but 30 watts is plenty for this 1115 G4. So now it's time to jump right into some emulation testing. First up, we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I'm at 1920 by 1440 with this one, and as long as the game's compatible with the ReDream emulator, you're not going to have any trouble. And going into this, I expected Dreamcast to run really well, whether you're using ReDream or Flycast. So with each one of these games you're going to see tested in this video, I will have Afterburn up in the top left-hand corner. That's just going to give us an idea of what's going on with this little laptop. I'm also going to have the name of the system, the name of the emulator, and if I'm upskilled or not. Plus, in the top right-hand corner, we'll have some box art so we know which game is playing at any given time. So Dreamcast is definitely good to go on this little system. Let's take it up a notch. We'll go up to PSP for the next one. So here we have PSP using PPSSPP, Vulcan back in, 3x resolution, really good performance. And with the easier to run games like this one here, Pro Street, we could probably go up to 4 and 5x with no issues. This game natively ran at 30 FPS and that's what we have here. But like I mentioned, this one isn't super hard to run. I've had good luck on lower end systems with this game. So let's go up to Chains of Olympus. So here it is, we're at 3x resolution, Vulcan back in, and every once in a while I do see it dip down, that just really comes with this game here. Everything that I ever tested this on does have some dips every once in a while. But I gotta say, this little i3 is holding its own so far, and if we take a look at Afterburner, this is running at 4 gigahertz on both of those cores there, and our CPU temperature has only hit around 50 degrees. Checking out some Sega Saturn using RetroArch in the Yobase and Shiro core. Really good performance here, and with that higher clock on that CPU, I expected it to run pretty well. I even tested the Beetle Core and had really good luck, but when it comes to the harder ones to emulate, like Virtua Fighter 2, I did notice some dips, so I just went back to Yobase and Chiro, and we're getting great Saturn performance. I got one more here to test with Saturn, and then we'll move over to something else. Jump. 
I had to throw this one in because when it comes to, you know, the ARM boards that we take a look at, like the Raspberry Pi, it's really almost impossible to run the main version of Killer Instinct 2 at full speed. And that really comes down to MAME being optimized for x86 or originally created for an x86 CPU. So if you did want to do MAME on something like this, you're not going to have any issues even with Killer Instinct 2. As you can see here, it's running at full speed. So I was very impressed by the PS2 emulation performance of this little machine here. I'm using PC SX2 with the DirectX 11 back end. I did try OpenGL, but it was a bit slow. Luckily, the PC SX2 emulator only utilizes around two cores with most of the systems that I've ever messed with, and we only have two cores here, but we have a pretty high clock when it comes to these mobile CPUs, which really helps out with this kind of emulation. And even with something like Gran Turismo 4, now with this run here, you'll see it dip down to around 56 every once in a while, but I didn't have it set to aggressive. This is the native resolution, basically the stock settings with this PC SX2 emulator. With a couple tweaks, we could get this to definitely run at 60, but it's really impressive to see this running on such a low-end chip. Another one I always like testing on these Intel chips is Citra, the 3DS emulator. Now this utilizes OpenGL, and with Intel and Nvidia chips I've had much better luck than AMD with OpenGL, and as you can see here it actually runs some of these games at full speed. We're still at the native resolution, but it's doing a great job. And this really comes down to that higher clock speed and decent OpenGL performance of this little GPU they have built in. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some GameCube emulation using Dolphin. Bulky back in, 720p, we have time splitters too. Now I kind of wish that I would have went up to 1080, but I was kind of strapped for time. I do think that we could run a lot of these games at 1080. Some of them will have to be set at 720, but with something like time splitters, which is a bit easier to emulate, 1080 should be totally possible on this system. So seeing how well this ran Time Splitters 2, I figured I'd throw something a little harder to emulate at it. We have Auto Modalista, still using that Vulcan back in, 720p, getting amazing performance. This is kind of my go-to test here. It's one of the harder ones to emulate, and we're at 60 with this little setup here. Looking really good, and we're only utilizing up to 22% of that CPU and around 30% of the GPU. So GameCube actually worked phenomenally on this little chip. What about Wii? Well, when it comes to Wii, we're getting the same performance. 720p, here's Sonic Colors, and I've mentioned this in several of my videos, but one of the big reasons I only test these games for Wii is because they will support the GameCube controller. So yeah, I mean, this little setup is actually handling emulation way better than I thought it would. I got one more Wii game to test. One of the best fighting games ever made for the Wii, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. This one is very intensive with a lot of effects on screen, but it's still running at full speed, 7.8p. There were more emulators that I wanted to test on this little setup, like SimU and RPCS3, but unfortunately we're only working with 4GB of RAM and that's just not enough for those emulators. I always got crashes with both of those, so there was no way for me to test it on this model with only 4 gigs of RAM. If I did pick up the 8GB model, there's actually a chance that some Wii games would run at full speed, but when it comes to PS3, I don't think we have enough cores and threads here. But looking at everything we tested, it did an amazing job, and you didn't see any N64 or SNES in this because this little setup is going to run it just fine. Overall, I'm very impressed with this little chip. Now this video wasn't specific to this laptop, it's really specific to this Intel chip, the 1115G4. Black Friday is coming up, and I can guarantee you that a lot of these lower-end laptops with this 11th Gen i3 will be on a really good sale. So if you're looking for something that's cheap and will run the emulators that you saw in this video, then the 1115G4 might be an awesome option. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on this little chip, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about this little laptop, I will leave a few links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.